All right, hey y'all, what's going on? Andrew Barnes here, Barnes Precision Machine. Um, y'all have seen him in a bunch of my reviews. I've reviewed a lot of his guns because he writes me a big, fat check to do these really, really nice polished gun reviews, right? Everybody that knows me probably knows that's a little, you know. <laughs> there ain't a bit of truth in it. But you know, hey. Well, anyhow. It's so Saturday, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. It's all right to talk a little trash. So, you know, we've been out here today. Andrew's helped me done a couple reviews, or we're working on a couple gun reviews, and he breaks out his new 308 with a uh, barrel profile change. You got something going on different here than what you've been doing. And so I thought maybe we could take some opportunity to talk about the you new 308 rifle, with the, the, or the same 308 rifle, yes? Yes. Different barrel profile. Correct. People on the PRS side, precision yep. long range shooting, precision right. rifle series, mm -hmm. shooting, whatever that specific discipline is. And it's it's a style of rifle, whether on the semi-auto side or the bolt gun side. Semi-auto guns that have been trying to hold with bolt gun accuracy, consistency, have tended to start to go up on barrel size as far as not only on length for velocity and getting everything you can out of you know the popular cartridges, um, but also on barrel diameter to get specific rigidity, heat dissipation over. Let me stop you right there. There's a lot of people that do not understand the difference between like a pencil barrel and a medium gauge barrel and then a heavy barrel or a bull barrel. So briefly, let's... Anybody that shoots precision and shoots groups does. Sure, but there's probably a lot of folks here that maybe don't. So touch on if you're shooting precision groups, not not take a granddaddy's you know deer rifle out and shooting it three rounds all day what's the benefit of having a bull barrel a heavy gauge barrel over a medium gauge rigidity heat dissipation over multiple shots which prevents things like shot stringing or change of impact from heat affecting the barrel more surface area cools off quicker well that's that's, that's the heat sink sure. heat dissipation part yeah other end of this when we talk about semi-auto gas guns and bolt guns a lot of times you're talking about resonance or harmonics in the barrel which is why people want to free float their barrels you know when you say free float remove all if possible or as much as possible any uh, applied forces to the barrel from a stock in the barrel channel carving out the barrel channel having a complete you know gap uh, with no obstruction in between the stock and the barrel I know there are pressure points, spring-loaded points. There's there's all kinds of opinion and style of what people want to do to, to make a barrel settle in after the shot for consistency. But as is common, there are free-floated type guns. What we're looking at on these are common free-float handguard systems. Yes, you have the gas tube. You do, you do have the gas block and that contact area, but it's minimal. So you have the rest of the barrel free-floated. So it doesn't interfere with, as the bullet travels down the bore and the barrel whips and vibrates. There's no real external forces acting against that. Correct. And that and that will lead it to be a more consistent harmonic profile. Therefore, consistency equals accuracy. It can. Okay. And in the AR design, we've got this thing called the gas block journal. That's a, a specific diameter relative to the gas block that you're using. A common diameter in the industry is on our earlier original barrels, 16 inch or 20 inch would be a industry standard 750 or three quarter diameter gas block journal. Barrel whip, um, like a hose whipping or a whip, bull whip, mm -hmm. is part of the harmonics of the barrel during its cycle. And, you know, thinking about ways to reduce that, we came up with moving up to the next larger gas block journal, the 937 gas block journal, and moving to more of a straight taper, similar to the M40 Marine Corps straight taper barrel by heart. And this is- It's been copied and reiterated over different types of barrels, but that taper, straight taper, is what we've gone after here, except for the area of the gas block register. And that should add consistency to the barrel whip? Well, it's our, our intent is to reduce the barrel whip in front of the gas block because 308 makers would build heavy contours back. But if you're using a 750 gas block, 
in front of the barrel is probably 700 all the way out to the end. Gotcha. We're maintaining, you know, 900 to 937 the entire distance from the gas block to the muzzle. So we've, we've added quite a bit of rigidity to that area. To where the gas block begins all the way through the muzzle? Correct. Okay. And, you know, on a 20-inch gun, that's beneficial. On a 24-inch gun, it's even more beneficial. What is, what is the length of this? This is a 20-inch gun, but for 6.5 platform, a lot of people want to go ahead with 24-inch to get yeah. all the velocity they can get out of the system. This is 308? It is. 762. Do you do a 308 with a 24-inch barrel? We have done some 24-inch barrels, but most customers for the 308 are going with the 20 inch barrel. Why is it you think they are preferring the 20 over the 24? Compact. Just easier to wield around? Yes. Do you feel like that those four inches on the 308 are negligible as far as velocity loss? Yeah, not near, I think, as much as gain in the 6.5. Okay, all right. Now, you've uh, you shot this rifle out and compared it accuracy-wise to the medium gauge. Would you consider this, the original barrel, a medium gauge? Or like, you know, a, a pen, this is not a pencil barrel. Absolutely not. Yeah, but, I'd, I'd consider that, as many in the industry would, a medium heavyweight contour. So compared the, the medium gauge. Similar in, in scale to the 5.56, 223 barrels we produce for our DMR rifles, three gun match carbines, and the basic CQB Mo rifle. Okay, so let me ask you this. Compare these two rifles, the original medium gauge profile to your, your new heavier profile, when you're shooting out at 100 yards or 500 yards. I'll back up a little bit since you're such a Colt aficionado and say these profiles and the ratio of that profile over a 223 556 barrel are similar to what would be considered the Colt H bar. Heavy, okay. So accuracy wise, what, what, have, what have you seen in gains for improvement when you went to the heavier barrel? I've seen some slight increase. But noticeable, or do you, you know, you got to have it bagged and match ammo, you know, match grade ammo, or is it, you know, the average guy goes out and buys this and gets a box of Hornaday off the shelf, are they going to be to benefit from the new heavier barrel? Are they going to see I it? I think so, yeah. Okay. That, Definitely. That, all right. Um, I mean, quality ammo at the end of the day out of an accurate rifle is going to how you're going to get accuracy. Sure. You're not going to get subpar ammo. Get a quality rifle with a quality barrel and a quality chamber. You're making these now? These are on the market now? Or is this a prototype? Or what's what with what? Oh, we've had the rifles out for years. And, of course, the barrels we've had available for about a year. About a year now. So you've got enough time in it to where what you're telling me is backed up with a year of, you know, field research, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, we've got other barrel manufacturers out there, for example, the degree that a 1 in 8 twist in a barrel, which is also a part of this you know, new barrel contour. I was going to ask you, what, what's the twist on it? Traditionally, everybody sticks with a 1 in 10, which we've done with our original barrels. Again, based on other platforms and other that, programs. This is a 1 in 8? This is a 1 in 8. Okay, so you make it get away with shooting a little bit longer, a little bit heavier bullet, like a 190. Because one, they make a 190 match king, right? Well, it seems like the, the, the trend has been for copper bullets and non lead core bullets which are going to make the if it's no if it's no lead to get that weight all copper they got to make the bullet longer correct and it's going to take a faster twist to stabilize a longer bullet well it's sure, certainly a help but right. the, the the trend of topic it seems like on the chat rooms when people dis discuss should i build a 308 762 gun with a one and eight twist is that you know you'll twist bullets apart Number one, you can't get enough powder in the case to twist, you know, bullets apart out of a 308. Right. Um, and also the popularity of solid copper or even solid brass polymer tip projectiles, you're not going to spin those bullets apart. Right, right. Um, thicker jacketed lead core bullets, you're not going to spin them apart. Um, you're just not going to get the velocities up and the RPM up from a 1 and 8 twist with a 308 case capacity to achieve these bullet destroying you velocities. Know, yeah, that okay. people are scared of. Um, you're also not going to uh, ex uh, experience spin drift of any, you know, applicable amount uh, that would, you know, scare somebody away from it. But the benefits of relative to the popularity of the solid copper round, you know, longer projectiles, even with lead core rounds, 
um, lends me to believe more twist is going to be a help. So, yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy with the groups that we're getting out of the 1 and 8 twist as compared to the 1 and 10 twist. And we've done very, very limited testing on medium weight 175 grain bullets. Uh, so I'd like to see more done with the heavier bullet. That's where I really think they'll shine. Now, you mentioned spin drift. I mean, is it, is it the centrifugal force of the bullet spinning that causes it to drift? You know, if it's a right hand Depending twist. Depending on the right it's rotation gonna, of the twist. Yeah. It's going to twist in that direction. But Correct. I mean, a lot of folks may not have ever heard of spin drift or know what it means. And it's usually not seen, you know, until you, a thousand yeah, yards you gotta, an Yeah, I mean, you got to get seven, eight hundred yards before yeah. spin drift is a, is a factor. Again, not going to be an issue for the intended range of this platform. Now... It's my understanding, and I, this is what I've been told, when it comes to twist ratios, relatively speaking, you can't really overstabilize a bullet. So if you have the opportunity to go to a little bit faster twist, there's no real, there's no real downfall ver versus a faster twist to, to a slower twist, other than make sure you're using bullets that are not going to destroy themselves due to centrifugal force. If you're shooting something like a 220 Swift that can generate the velocity to destroy the bullet. I think, you know, bullet profile can have a lot to do with that. I think the bullet makers are going to jump in and say, but that's overstepping my pay grade. So, But my, <laughs> but would you agree that you can't overstabilize while you can... Un a faster twist isn't going to hurt, say, a, a, if you're shooting a 168 grain Match King over, you know, 1 in 8, 1 in 10, is it going to make a difference on a lighter or shorter bullet? Again, I'm I'm gonna I'm sure there are arguments out there both ways, but from what we've seen on 170 gra 175 grain and what is a popular, you know, precision rifle series or 308 762 match load beyond a, a standard 168, uh, it's totally acceptable twist. Okay, well, I mean, is there anything else you want to go over before we wrap this up and get to some live fire? That's about it. All right. Well, you heard it. That's about it.